My name is Rachel Maldonado, and my website is rhmaldonado.com. It is my belief, human spirit, and connect that I want to tell your story and mine. I am with Esther Sadler. How are things? Good. How are you? Good. So you have this story about the birth of your son. How did it all start? Well, we were moving up here from Arizona, and on the way up here, we found out that we were having a baby, and we were really excited because it was our firstborn, so we were super excited about it, and um, just trying to remember all the details, it's kind of hard. Yeah. But, so you found out you're having a boy? Yes, I really wanted a little girl, of course, it's, so I was really excited about finding out the gender, and we found out it was a boy, and of course my husband was delighted because he's really into hunting and stuff, so he was excited to have a little boy to go hunting with him. Yeah, oh my goodness, well that is really exciting. And then, did you have a easy pregnancy, difficult, how did that go? Well, it was, it was, it was difficult, and well, it was easy and difficult at the same time. It started out where we had just moved up here, so we were living in an RV actually for four months, so that's kind of hard. Your first four months of pregnancy, you have the morning sickness, and you're stuck in this little RV, and my husband had to cook all his food outside because it made me so sick, and then at four months, and this, when I was four months along, we finally got a house, so we were redoing it and doing all the stuff to it, and I was working full-time. Um, it was like about 40 hours a week, but I had to commute to work as well. And I started to notice as I got closer to like five months or so, I started to have a lot of lower back pain. Um, and I didn't think much of it at that time. You know, I was on my feet a lot at work and we were short staffed. So I was constantly on my feet moving around. And then finally on a Friday, I noticed I had a little bit of spotting, you know, in me. I didn't want to worry too much about it. I was like, you know, it's probably fine. I'll just finish up my work day. I'll try to take it easy. And um, I went home that night. Um, my husband was gone. It was in September, so it was peak elk season. So he was gone hunting with his brother. And I noticed that night, it was like around, you know, probably like almost 11 o'clock that I started to bleed a little bit more. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the emergency room. And at that point, for me, that's a big deal because I try not to freak out about the little things. But... I was like, you know, I'm just going to go there. So I went there, uh, and they hooked me up to the fetal monitor, and they, I, I was having signs of contractions, but they, they, they called the doctor at that time, my OB, and she, at that point, was like, you know what, um, maybe it's nothing, just go home and hydrate, because she knew that I had been working really hard. Yeah. Um, okay, get up, get up off your feet for the weekend, and come back on Sunday for what's called a beta methasone shot to help just in case baby does come early um, to help the lung development. So I got my first shot that night, um, did really good, stayed off my feet all day Saturday, just kind of chilled at home. And then I came back on Sunday for my second shot. And at that time they put me in the monitor again and noticed I was still heavy contractions. And the doctor had decided at that point, like, okay, let's just put you on light duty at work. And, um, you know, hopefully that'll help. Sometimes people just have mild contractions throughout their entire pregnancy. So went home Sunday and relaxed. And at that point, I was like, gosh, should I call my husband? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So I started all my FMLA paperwork. And then um, I think on Tuesday, so he had finally come down from the mountains on Monday. And I called him and let him know what was going on. And on Tuesday, I was like, you know, I'm going to go in for my ultrasound early because I had an ultrasound on Friday's schedule. But I called my doc and asked him to move yeah. it up to just to be sure that everything was OK. And my husband, we, at that point, of course, being our first baby, we loved those ultrasounds. So we really were excited. It's like, okay, I'll be there just because I want to be a little boy. You know, so he came back and, you know, we had an ultrasound where I was looking at, you know, and I was like, gosh, that foot, he had his little foot. He's always been a little kicker, but he had his little foot. looks like, when I asked the ultrasound tech, I was like, is that my cervix? Is this foot kind of kicking? It looks pretty thin. And she's like, I'm not allowed to say anything. So I was like, all right. But um, she's like, just go to the waiting room, and then um, I'll, I'll be back. I was like, okay. So me and my husband were sitting there, and my coworkers are walking through um, on the way to lunch. You know, we're saying hello and making small chat. And um, and then she comes back out with a wheelchair. She's like, okay, well, we're going to take you upstairs. 
and I looked at my husband and I looked at me and, and he was like, okay. And then we get up there and they, they take us to a room and he was like, gosh, that he, that's the first, like kind of something dawned on him. He was like, are we having a baby? Cause this looks like a room where people have babies. Cause there was like the monitor and all the equipment. She's like, you know, I can't say, but the, the doctor's on the way, you know? So I just, we got all hooked up and the doctor comes in, looks a little worried. And she's like, you know what, it, your cervix, your, um, three, your three centimeters dilated and fully effaced, which means that my cervix was down to like nothing and it was starting to go, go into labor. And so she's like, it looks like we're going to have the baby. We're going to fly you guys out to Spokane. So I was like, okay. Um, wow. I cried a little bit, but I've never oh, seen Wow. Yeah. So, so sudden. Yeah, and my husband is never the type of guy that ever cries. So, and he yeah. just his eyes red, and he just started crying. You yeah. know, I was like, okay, let's just we'll get through this. We'll be fine. You know. So, they did one last check. The helicopter. They actually already called the helicopter to come and get get, get me and Wyatt. Um, they did one last check just to make sure, and then they found that it was my my um, amniotic sac was bulging. So. They were like, you know what, we just, he's footling breach, breach, and we just don't want him to go into labor up there and have him be breach. So we're going to deliver him here. We'll take him out, and then you can stay here in the cover. So we're like, okay. And, you know, it's just kind of a mess then. And then, um, you know, just get How many out. weeks was this? You know, the baby so yeah. early. Yeah. yeah, he was, he was only, I was 26 weeks along. So, oh. so we, yeah, he was very early. And then we went and did, had an emergency C-section and immediately Wyatt was taken out and we could hear his little cry. We were just sitting there um, doing a C-section and we heard the tiniest little wah! And then that was all we heard and he was taken away and um, they intubated him there. I got stitched up and I got to see him before my flight took him away. So my husband went down with him to Spokane, and then I had to stay three days behind um, until I healed up from the C-section. And then from there, we went down to, to um, Sacred Heart, Nikki, where he spent 102 days there total. And it was rough at first. Um, you know, it was really hard to connect with him for the first three days, I, I would say two or three days, because they don't look human. Yet. They do, but they don't. He was like purple and tiny and skinny and his ears were like down to his chin and he just with tubes and IVs and, and at that How point much did he weigh? He weighed one pound fourteen ounces. So he was very tiny. He could fit like in my hands, you know. So yeah, at that point it wasn't to tell the nurse we did kangaroo what's called kangaroo care. We do chest to chest. And that's when I first felt like a mother just holding him. So. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So it's all so sudden. You have no <laughs> idea. And then suddenly he's born at one pound, 14 ounce. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then and then he, did, he had a very good progression there. We were lucky enough to stay at the Ronald McDonald house. Um, we got there uh, probably after two weeks. My mom was there. So we stayed at the hotel with her for a little bit. And then after two weeks of that, we went to move into the Ronald McDonald House, which is an incredible organization. Just they, the people there have the biggest hearts and it's a nonprofit and it didn't cost us a dime, which meant a lot to us because we had just bought a house. So we had, we just had all these payments and stuff due. And now we're looking at a baby in the NICU. So it was, they made the experience as, as good as it could be, you know, especially we were there over Thanksgiving. We were there over Halloween which the nurses too at the NICU made it really special at Halloween. They went to build a bear and brought this costume home for him. And I was like, gosh, that looks really big. That looks really small. Is that going to fit him? And it's crazy because the costume itself was huge on him. He was just swimming in this little Batman costume. And that's how tiny he was. And he was, that was in October. So he's probably about a month or a month along. But yeah, he was still very small. But, um, the Ronald McDonald House did a great Thanksgiving meal, and for Christmas time, they had people come in and decorate, and um, someone would actually pull your name 
from like I don't know how they did it, but the volunteers they you know we came home from the NICU Christmas Eve and we had a pile of presents waiting wow. for us. It was incredible. I mean, overall, given the experience, I that we were very blessed. And I I can't imagine someone having that type of experience without the Ronald McDonald House, without the family support that we had, and the doctors and nurses there. They just made the worst situation the best it could be. Yeah. And then through these 102 days at the NICU with your new baby, you know, how did you end up feeling towards the end? Were you able to bond with your baby and with your husband? Oh, yeah. Like, I, like I said, the moment we did the kangaroo, the chest to chest, that that became my little boy. You know, yeah. he, he's my boy. And I think the hardest part of being in NICU and just being a mother is at nighttime, I would, we would have to go home. You know, you can't mm -hmm. stay there. You can't come at night. And even now, like, I think that's why I'm such a, probably like a helicopter mom. You know, I, the minute he stirs, I'm awake and I look at him. It's just because when, for three months, you can't comfort your child when he cries. Um, you know, he was under 1,500 grams, so it means and every time he touched him, we had to put gloves on. So, and then we, they had to control the environment. And so you don't want to be opening up his little isolate too much. So, you know, it was really hard hearing him cry. Lots of times he'd be in his little, his little isolate crying. And all I could do was reach in with my little hands and give what they call hand hugs. And it's where you take your little arms and tuck them across, across your chest and tuck the little legs in and you put like pressure on them. So they feel that safe, kind of like they're in a the womb again. And that's, that's all I could do to comfort him doing you know, the shots, the, the IVs, the, you know, the little CPAPs, the nasal pump, the, you know. So. Um, yeah, that is incredible. So your son Wyatt is quite the trooper. You know, he had to do that too. And how is he doing now? Oh, he's doing great. He's become a little tyrant, actually, <laughs> because he is in charge of the house, and he will let you know what he wants. He just started having tantrums maybe about a month ago, and if he doesn't get his way, he, he, he lets you know, and he's running around, and he loves to play. He loves picking flowers, and he knows he just learned the word ta-da, so now he'll do something like, ta-da, except he says ta -da -long. So, yeah, he is, he's a character, and he's just an adorable little boy, so... Um, so he I went from so being one pound, 14 ounces, and in the NICU for 102 days to a little boy who is doing so well. How old yeah, is he'll he be, now? He'll be two in September. On September 18th, he'll be two. He's uh, 26 pounds, so he's, he's still on the smaller side. Um, he had no lasting um, long-term effects from being so premature, but... He still is on the small side, but it's not like I'm very big and my husband's not like a giant either. So he could just be a more petite little boy. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. And what would you say for all the moms and dads out there who have a child who has something going on with them, something special when they're born and they have to be in the NICU? What's your advice to those parents? I would say just for any parent going through um, a difficult birth or a difficult experience, um, medical, I mean, there are people with medical conditions that, you know, um, I don't know, just, you know, try to focus on the good and treasure the moments. You know, a lot of times, I, that's a really hard one. I don't I actually know. I just would try to find joy in little things and really every day, be grateful for what I do have. It's easy in those situations to start to feel sorry for yourself and be like, oh, poor me, poor me. But instead you have to turn that around and, and look like, wow, what do I have? I have fantastic family support. I have a great team of doctors. I have, you know, a great team of nurses. You know, I have a loving husband. You know, I have places like the Ronald McDonald House where volunteers are giving so much of their own time and their own money to help people like me. So just the gratitude. I think that's the biggest thing. Gratitude. Focus on gratitude and not the negative. Yeah. And I have one last question for you. What makes you feel alive? Um, uh, 
that was a hard question too. What makes you feel alive? I mean, I guess just realizing my blessings that I have every day. You know, it's easy. I guess just counting my blessings. You know, I'm grateful that I wake up each morning and I'm breathing. I'm grateful that I wake up every morning and why it's next to me, safe, and you know, we're blessed. Just yeah. that makes it. Well, thank you so much for your story because I think that there are a lot of moms and dads who have an unusual birth story and it's just encouraging to hear about someone else who went through it too. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, no